<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. People, what experience made you believe in the paranormal, entities, etc. When I was in 7th grade, I had just started my winter break, so I was always home with my sister while she and her boyfriend watched movies and played games on the computer or TV. And my mom had left for Vegas for the weekend, so it was basically my sister and me. Now she always used to bug me, wake me up with a computer, or throw pillows at me, so I never got much sleep. Well, one night I was feeling under the weather and told her I'd be taking a nap. About 30 minutes later, I wake up to the sound of dragging on the carpet. I just told my sister to keep it down while I slept and went back to it. Not even 10 minutes go by before it gets louder. So I'm pissed off and decided to speak my mind. I turn over and look at the floor, only to find my sister crawling back and forth on the carpet with her hair in front of her face and wearing a gown. I had enough. I took my pillow and said, can you knock it off? I'm sleeping, and threw it as hard as I could at her. I immediately saw her stop and start to turn in my direction. Normally, I would have gone back to sleep. But I hear my sister call from the living room to tell me to shut up because Jersey Shore was on and I was making too much noise. My blood immediately ran cold as I saw this figure start to turn to face me and stand up. I screamed and ran into the living room, panting and wheezing, and told my sister what happened. Apparently she'd been having dreams about a dark figure walking back and forth in her room too, just staring at her. We didn't sleep in our rooms until our mom came back from Vegas. When I was 10, we lived in a house with a weird layout and very weird energy. I was left alone most of the time because my parents worked a lot and my siblings were older and had friends or school activities. I didn't mind being alone, despite the paranormal activity, but I was on edge most of the time. My cats didn't help, they would randomly stop their play and hiss in empty spaces. I ran out of the house because of that a few times. The worst was in the pool, though. When we first moved in, I would swim every day. I was in love with that pool. I would swim alone every day, without a care in the world. Well, one day, while I was playing in the deep end, I felt something touch me, pressure from my neck down my body to my right ankle. It all happened in a split second, and at first I thought I was just feeling the water move, but then I felt fingers close around my ankle. One by one, and then they squeezed. There was no mistaking that. I genuinely thought I was going to be dragged under. I've never been able to be alone in a pool since. Years later, when I talked to my mom about how terrifying it was for me, she revealed that they had found child-sized foot and hand prints on the walls in my room's closet that weren't there before, cliche, right? And that a neighbor regularly saw a little boy hanging around, windows, and had learned that the son of the original owners had drowned there. When I was about 12 years old, my dad took my mom and me down a haunted road in East Texas. It's called Bragg Road, and you can probably Google it. It's an 8-mile road, completely straight, and the trees on either side hang over like a canopy. From most places on the road, it looks like it goes on forever in either direction. If you manage to pick the right night to drive down the road, during spring break or even most weekends, there are a lot of other people driving down it, then a dim light will appear in the distance. It is said that the road used to be a train track and that the light is either an oncoming ghost train or some unfortunate soul who was decapitated by a train and now spends eternity wandering the road with a lantern looking for their head. I've been down this road twice. The most recent time was over spring break of 2016, and there were so many cars that you couldn't tell what was the ghost and what was a car. Of course, every spooky light turned out to be a car, and it was very disappointing. There's a YouTube video of my ex and me goofing off during this drive but I'm not going to link it because it's a little embarrassing. When I was 12, however, my parents decided to go during a school night, so nobody was around. Sure enough, a dim light appeared in the distance, gently bobbing up and down. It would appear and reappear during the whole trip down the road, and when we reached the end, I remember getting out of the car barefoot. The sand was cold and dry despite it being a warm Texas night, and my mom, dad, and I all watched as the light began to jump up and down wildly then fly off into the trees and vanish into thin air. Shit was spooky. So I am going to tell you something that happened to me about 6 or 7 years ago. Right now, I'm 26. My parents were on vacation, and I was home alone. My sister lives in another house near mine, which will be relevant in a bit. Since I woke up, I felt something odd, like someone's watching me or someone's near me, but I can't see anything. I took a shower and then went down the stairs to have some lunch. At the same time, my sister was entering the kitchen from another door that leads to the backyard, the backyard of my house connects with the house of my sister. Before you enter the kitchen, there is a big wall mirror near the door. While I was passing it, I saw something behind me, 
and I felt so scared when I took a glance at it. It was something around 6.5 feet, I'm 6 feet tall, with no skin and all of his muscles exposed, big square teeth, and big round eyes with no eyelids. I remember that I was in shock because I saw my sister, and she was pale and shaking. Maybe all of this happened in less than a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity. We then ran out of the house and went to her place. I was asking what she saw, and at first she did not want to answer. Later that day, she told me that she saw a big skinned person with all his muscles exposed, big square teeth, and big round eyes, even though I never told her what I saw. We never discussed the topic after that day, and we never saw that thing again. I grew up in a 150 year old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. I saw things. Disembodied shadows, glowing red eyes at the top of the stairs, my mom said I talked about a man in a red plaid shirt, but I don't have strong memories of that. I do remember the monster very clearly. I had to have been preschool aged, probably four. I was playing in the kitchen while my mom was doing dishes when I looked up and saw a monster standing in the doorway. It had yellow horns that almost touched the doorframe, long orange fur, and yellow teeth and claws. I said, Mommy, look at a monster. And it turned and ran down the hall, either towards the front door or my dad's office. I didn't watch where it went, I was too busy running in the opposite direction. I also had a dream, or maybe it wasn't a dream, where the same thing happened, the same monster standing in the same doorway, the only difference being that I was sitting at the kitchen table instead of playing. That time I tried to scream, but I couldn't, so I just hid under the table until it went away. I would have written it all off as dreams, but my mom still remembers the first incident. She remembers feeling very creeped out all of a sudden, then hearing me say, Mommy, look like a monster. She almost looked, but she was too scared, so she just told me there was no such thing and continued doing dishes as I hid behind her, hoping that if she didn't acknowledge it, it would go away. I was out walking with a friend. Our favorite place to go was the forest behind our town graveyard. We had a paranormal encounter there before where we saw a man walk through the forest, he was wearing old, timey clothing, and he had these large wolves walking beside him. He literally walked right by us and disappeared. He didn't even acknowledge us. He just walked by with about seven wolves by his side. They didn't even look at us. He just walked by and disappeared into thin air. It is strange that this is Ireland, and wolves have been extinct in Ireland for centuries. This man just disappeared into thin air with the wolves. My friend was frozen to the spot, and I literally shook so hard with fear. It wasn't fear of seeing him disappear, it was pure fear that he was walking wolves. Thank God my friend was there to witness it too. But this isn't the weirdest part of the tale. We left the forest really quickly after that encounter. There was a tiny bit of a field beside the forest. We had to pass it to get back onto the footpath so we could go home. As we were passing the field, we looked at what was sitting in the field. It was a creature. The top half of it was human the bottom half wasn't. It had two large black wings. It was just sitting there on the grass with two big black wings. Its face was so evil. It was the worst feeling I've ever felt in my entire life when we looked at it. My friend called it a gargoyle when describing it because the face was black as coal and it had two of the most evil eyes I've ever seen, with slits down the middle. It raised its head from the sorrowful bowed head position it was in and looked us dead straight in the eyes. I felt a rush of complete fear and sickness wash over me. It was as if we were about to die. The feeling was that bad. When it looked at us, I heard the words run really loud in my head. We just legged it. We ran back into town and civilization. Now, I've never run since I was a child, but boy did I run. When we got back into town, we literally couldn't stop shaking. My friend and I had complete nightmares about it for years afterwards. I still to this day shake when I try to relive the memory, and I've had my fair share of paranormal encounters. I am really glad that both of us experienced these two events. Especially the gargoyle demon creature. If I were on my own, I probably would have died. To this day, we still talk about it. I got talking to a lady who does spiritual healing, and I was telling her about the creature. She literally couldn't stop thinking about it, and she couldn't sleep thinking of it. Very strange indeed. I was maybe 11 years old at the time. It was midday, mainline electricity had just come back on and my father had asked me to turn the power generator off, which was located on the third floor of the house. I walked up the stairs, thinking about the dinner my mother was making and how I couldn't wait to have some chicken. I reached the third floor, which is accessed through the second floor balcony, turn the generator off, and start walking back down. As I'm walking down the stairs, I see it out of the corner of my eye, standing in front of the second floor entrance into the house. I focus my gaze on it, in complete disbelief of what I'm seeing. 
I remember very vividly telling myself not to take my eyes off it so I could gauge if it was real or not. It was a black clothed figure or man the length of the door, with only its head and hands exposed that were a red pink hue, like the flesh had been burned or melted. Its gaze was piercing. My legs turned to jelly, and I lost balance, falling down the stairs but managing to hold onto the railings. When I looked back at the door, it had disappeared. I raced downstairs in complete horror, asking my father if he had just seen it or if he was pulling a prank on me, but he just looked at me like I was crazy and said I was imagining things. One night, many years ago, I woke up and called for my mom. I kept my eyes closed because I'm afraid of opening them in the dark in the middle of the night. Anyway, as soon as I called for her, I heard someone get off my brother's bed, run to me, and start breathing intensely. Still, my eyes remained closed because I was frightened to open them, but I knew someone was there. I could feel their presence, I could feel the evil. My gut told me it wasn't a pleasant entity. I continued to call out for my mom, and the breathing got louder and louder and louder. As soon as she came in, she turned on the light, and the breathing was instantaneously gone. My brother was sound asleep in his bed, so it definitely wasn't him. I tried to explain to her what happened, but she said it was a nightmare. I knew it wasn't a nightmare, I was fully awake. I don't think it was sleep paralysis because I was able to scream for her, while many sufferers from SP claim that when they do try to scream, they end up whispering. This was clearly not the case with me. I tried looking it up, and all I got were forums on SP, but I know for sure it wasn't. I never had an encounter with this thing again, and I pray I don't ever do. My grandpa spoke to me at his funeral. I was very young at the time, like young enough to not realize that it isn't normal for the person whose funeral to be speaking to you. Nobody believes me when I tell them, but it's my earliest, most vivid memory. I approached the casket, and plain as day, he smiled at me and said, it's time for me to go now, goodbye, son. I don't really have any clear memories of him when he was alive, but my dad always tells me I was his favorite grandson and always tells me a bunch of stories of me going to visit him and us going to the creek that runs through his property, teaching me to fish, and showing me the cabin he built out in the woods. Everyone in my family thought I was lying, but I know what I saw and heard. My mom and my sister died within two months of one another, my sister died in a car accident, and after that, I think mom gave up trying to fight her failing kidneys and diabetes. They lived in the same house, my sister took care of my mother, and I inherited the house. And wow, the crap that started to go on here after they both died was insane. For months after my sister died, the door to her bedroom would open on its own, even if firmly shut and locked, around the same time on Saturday night, the exact time she would have gotten home if she hadn't been killed. One night, I was here alone and heard a massive boom. Someone had knocked over the seven-foot-tall china cabinet in the dining room. The floor shook, it was so loud. I ran down the stairs thinking someone was breaking into the house, and nothing was disturbed. Things started disappearing, then reappearing in odd places they were never in before and shouldn't have been, jewelry, keys, C. I heard banging in the attic a few times, footsteps on the stairs, and the TV would come on by itself. I felt my mother's presence more than once and smelled her perfume. In my sister's old room, now my room, pictures fell from the walls, books from shelves, and the closet door would not stay closed. I've also felt my mother's cat, who died a year later, jump up on my bed and make muffins at night as soon as the lights go out and lay down next to me. It's been three years, and the incidents have tapered off to almost nothing now. Before this, you couldn't get me to believe in the existence of ghosts if you showed me scientific proof. But living here changed my mind. I know my mother and my sister were still here for some time after they died. They're gone now, and I hope they've both found peace wherever they are. One night in high school, I woke up to something poking me in the shoulder. I had fallen asleep with the TV on, so I suspected it was the remote poking me from under the sheets. I ripped my blanket off, but the TV remote was down by my feet. I looked over to my bedroom door, and it was swung open. In the open doorway was a floating figure. It glowed a very faint green and was wearing a tattered gown of some sort, I always assumed hospital, but I suppose it could have been a regular old nightgown. The strange thing about this figure was that it had three faces. I know that's hard to imagine. I remember not being scared but having this overwhelming feeling of sadness. It's like I was supposed to help them in some way but I couldn't, or I wasn't supposed to be looking at them? It was a really strange experience. After a couple of seconds, the figure disappeared, and I stayed awake until my parents woke up so I could tell them about it. I was staying at the Double Day Inn on the outskirts of the Gettysburg battlefield. It was boiling hot that night with no air, so I slept with my back and most of my lower body exposed and out of the covers. Around 4 a.m., I felt something tickling my lower back. 
It woke me up the first time, then I felt it once more, like a finger moving across my back, and I freaked out. I woke my boyfriend up, pretty much sobbing. He turned the lights on, and we sat there for a few minutes, unable to fall back asleep. About 40 minutes went by, and I was just falling back asleep in this deathly hot and now lit room. Something grabbed my thigh. It was as clear as day. This resulted in more tears and me freaking out. I didn't fall back asleep until around 6.45 am, and the next night was awful. I didn't have another encounter, but I was petrified and refused to stick any limb or patch of skin out of the covers despite the room temperature. No one believes me. Even my boyfriend laughs about it, despite my fright. I lived in an extremely old house in a very old city outside of Boston, Massachusetts. The house itself was 315 years old. The banging, knocking, and noises I always attributed to the house being old and I think my ex, with whom I lived, attracted negative energy. He was a believer, and I wasn't. He looked for signs, and I debunked them. One night there was something pounding on our bedroom door. Then it picked the towel, hanging on the door to dry, up off the door and placed it back after about 4-5 to five seconds. It was so freaky. Ironically enough, two days after my one and only experience with sleep paralysis occurred, it was daytime, and a black figure with a top hat was standing to my left as I was stuck in my bed and felt a crushing sensation on my chest. Since that house and those experiences, I've been a believer. At about 10 or 11 years old, two neighbor kids and I were having a camp out, which wash happening two or three night a week. In the middle of the night, we all finally tired out and fell asleep. The kid wakes up to go pee and looks out of the tent and sees a large, 7 to 8 feet tall, blacker than black thing standing near the rear bumper of his dad's F-150. The truck had a cap, and the head was even with the top of the cap. A friend woke me and the other kid up. We all looked and saw the same thing. It was dark out with a street light about 75 feet away, behind the figure, which helped us see the outline but served to backlight it enough to obscure features. It was tall, dark, and fairly wide. No noise. No smell. We were about 50 feet away and slightly higher in elevation, with nothing but a yard in between. We watched it for a couple minutes, scared to death. It slowly moved to the left, fully behind the truck, with no noise, and we did not see it again. We did not sleep again that night. The next morning, we all agreed on what we saw. I went and checked out the area and saw no tracks, a gravel road, or tracks off the road, grass going into the woods. There was a large smudge in the dust on the tailgate of the truck that could have been a large hand, but it was not at all clear what it was. I always just assumed this was a Bigfoot sighting, southeast Ohio, about 25 miles from Salt Fork, but I have had others suggest skinwalker or even shadow creature slash hat man type deals. We were all terrified. So much so, we were afraid to leave the tent to make the 50-yard run to the house. Of course, no parents believed us. I was in the bush, my kids were about 2 kilometers ahead of me, except my son and his girl, who were about 1 kilometer behind. I was waiting on them to catch up and was bored and started yahooing and whatnot, thinking maybe the kids that were ahead would hear me. The terrain was steep, we were walking back from a waterhole at the bottom of a gorge. Anyway, I was yelling loudly when the bush started shaking, maybe 500 meters below me, like something really large was moving through the scrub. Bigger than a human. Next, the wind picked up, and small stones and sticks were being flung around. I was turning 360 degrees left and right, and no matter where I turned, the projectiles were hitting me in the face. Then two guys walked into view. I was expecting my son, but these two came around. I was scared and said, did you hear that? One of them said yes, and so long as it stays down there, we will be safe up here. I don't know what it was, but I am not going back there without asking the elders for permission. I was around 15 years old, going about my day as normal. I'm walking to my brother's room and looking through my sister's door as I do. When I look inside, I see a small, young girl with straight brown hair weeping on my sister's bed with her face in her hands. I can't remember what she was wearing. My heart dropped, and my pace slowed as I looked at her for a good few seconds. I passed the door and could no longer see inside. I built the courage to look again, but when I did, the girl was gone. Later that day, I explained to my sister what happened. It freaked her out because she had been having nightmares about the exact thing I saw for days beforehand. I was the first person she told. We still talk about it occasionally, mainly so we don't lose the memory. That's my only experience with anything paranormal, and I don't have a good explanation for it other than the unlikely event that both of our subconsciousness knew something was going on with my sister and told us the same thing in different ways. One night I went ghost hunting with my brother and his friends. 
we went to an old Civil War era cemetery in the foothills of my city. We took pictures and walked around for a bit before leaving. We later decided to wander over to an old field by a park, and we left our car. In the field, we used a Ouija board that one of his friends had made out of cardboard and a sharpie. He brought a clear plastic cup to use as the marker, or whatever it was called. I didn't believe anything was really talking to us, I thought it was dumb, of course. Something, perhaps not us, still doesn't want us to believe something else, but something was spelling things out. My brother decided he would ask it something personal, what color underwear am I wearing? The cup we used moved over the letter B. He was wearing blue underwear. It was amusing, but it knew. One of the people who went with us wanted to know who we were talking to. She asked, are you Indian? The cup moved to the letter Y. The area used to be home to tribes that lived here before the settlers came. I can't remember what else we asked because it was 9 to 10 years ago. Days leading up to the Ouija board experiment, my brother accidentally washed his cell phone in the laundry. His phone was sitting on the windowsill in his bedroom when he went to sleep that night after we had messed with the board. The phone had been turned off since it had been washed, so he was waiting for it to dry. The turned off phone rang multiple times that night. He eventually had to take the battery out, and it stopped ringing. My bedroom was next to his. When I tried to go to sleep, I noticed that the corner of my room was pitch black, much darker than normally when the lights are off. You know when you've been in the dark and your eyes adjust so you can see? I could not see into the corner, it was black, as if someone had taken a paintbrush to it. I had the distinct feeling I was being watched, it was very alarming, to say the least. Eventually I fell asleep, and I do remember having nightmares that night. The pictures we took of the cemetery were digital. I uploaded them to my PC the next day. One of the strange things that happened was that some of them had illumination in the sky. It was super dark that night, and there were no lights at this cemetery, so it was strange. I was at a cemetery checking out graves when I was a teenager. I heard a small voice say mine from a few feet away. I looked up to see a young girl in a little dress standing behind my mother, who was kneeling down and inspecting a grave. When I moved my eyes a little, she was gone. I walked over to where my mom was, and it was the grave of a young girl. That sealed it for me. I'm a Christian, and I know there are spirits in the Bible, but that experience convinced me for the rest of my life that ghosts are a thing. When I was a small girl, I had a lot of doll babies. They were your average dolls of the time, Mrs. Beasley, Ruffy Ann, and other just ordinary dolls. At night, my mom would place them all, sitting upright, in a box at the foot of my bed. She'd turn off the light, and the terror would begin. I'd shut my eyes really tight and cover my ears, but I could always hear it. It started with rustling. I'd hear movement and fabric rustling. Then humming. Not humming a song, not nice humming. Just monotone and mean. Then the whispers. Incoherent whispering at first, then forming words open your eyes. Look at us. M. Marie. Marie the whispering was cold and unfriendly, and it morphed into a chant. I could never make out the words, but the whispers were chanting something. Slowly, I'd open my eyes as if I had no choice. The dolls were looking right at me. They were trying to climb over the side of the box and into the bed with me. Their faces were not their usual faces. Their faces were now twisted and tortured. Some of them looked hopelessly desperate as they pointed at me. Some of them were laughing, and some of them were crying. A few of them would then start to scream and it would hurt my ears so bad I'd scream shut up. The noise and movement would stop. For a while. And if I didn't fall asleep soon enough, it would start over again. I'm not making this up. I wasn't dreaming. This happened for three months when I was eight, and we were living temporarily in an old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere, Wisconsin. From October through December. Then in January, we moved, and it never happened again. I was around the age of 13. I lived upstairs on the second story of my family's home, and it was summer. I remember it being in the early afternoon and walking up to my room and seeing my mom with a curtain pulled back, looking out of the window. I kind of laughed and asked what she was doing because it was strange for her to be in my room just staring out of the window. When I asked her what she was doing, she turned quickly and looked at me with a startled look on her face, and a few seconds later, she just completely vanished. The curtain dropped and swayed as if it had been being held back by someone or something. I probably turned as white as a sheet and felt like I was going to vomit. Not even 10 seconds after it vanished, I heard my mom laughing and talking to the dogs in the backyard. When I looked out my window, I realized this thing looked exactly like she did. Clothing, hair, makeup, shoes, all of it. I can physically remember my blood running colder than it already was when I realized that whatever it was was watching and mimicking her. I still get chills thinking about it. Not only that, but within the same week, 
My mom saw me twice in the window when she could clearly hear me in another room with a friend. My adoptive dad saw my mom walk behind him minutes before she came from upstairs, and I saw my best friend while she was over running down the hallway. Then, after laughing, thinking she was playing a joke on me, she asked me what I was talking about from the opposite end of the hallway. I've had many weird things happen to me, but all of that stands out more than most. For almost all of my life, I never really believed in the paranormal, but a couple of months ago, that changed. I was on a quiet night drive by myself on an empty road a bit west of Houston. The tire on my car randomly blew out, which was weird on its own as I had just gotten new tires a couple of weeks prior. So I pulled over to the side of the road, got a flashlight, and started changing the tire. After I was done, as I was closing the trunk after putting all my tools back, I saw a tall black human-like figure in the field off the road, about 100 feet away from the road. It was at least twice my height, I'm 5 feet 6 inches, and had glowing red eyes. There wasn't a fence or anything on the side of the road, and then it started walking towards me, and I felt the air get really cold, probably somewhere around 50 to 60 degrees in the middle of April. I ran into my car, but when I closed the door, the car shut itself off and locked the doors. I tried to start it multiple times as the human-like figure was walking towards me, and eventually the car started. I put the car into gear and drove away as fast as I could. Later that night at my house, the power randomly goes out while I'm eating, and I hear a window open. Since I was in the kitchen, I grabbed a knife and went into the room. I heard the window open. I go in, and there's nothing there except for deep scratches on the flooring. The next morning, I asked my neighbors if their power went out too, but nobody else's did. I've been unsettled since that experience. I got a new job and started cycling past an old person's care home on the way. I work shifts. One morning I was cycling to work at about 4.30 am, and as I passed the long driveway that leads up from the road to the care home, which is a large building that looks like a pre-war stately home or something similar, sprawling grounds, etc., I almost collided with another cyclist that was coming down the driveway. I only saw them at the last second, just a flash of a blue jacket and the vague shape of a person on a bike. After damn near shitting myself, I had a look around but couldn't see the other person anywhere. I shrugged it off and kept going. After that, I always kept an eye out for cyclists coming down that driveway. Six weeks or so after the first incident, I saw the same cyclist coming towards me. I got a better look this time. A woman in her late 50s or early 60s with a slim build and light blue fleece is wearing a black helmet on a black bicycle. I stopped to allow her to pass me. She never did. There's a big gateway where the drive meets the road. She disappeared from view behind the gateway and never came out on the other side. I've seen her several times since then, always in the same place around the same time. She never makes it out of the driveway. She always disappears where the road starts. It's a poorly lit road with a relatively high speed limit, so I feel it's fairly obvious what may have happened. I don't know if it's real or if I'm crazy, but considering I've never, to my knowledge, been prone to any sort of hallucination under any other circumstance, I'm willing to entertain the possibility that I see a ghost every now and then. I'd like to ask other people in my area if they've seen anything like that, but I don't want to come across as a lunatic, so I've kept this largely to myself, only telling my wife, and I've experienced many other things that are individually less convincing but, when taken all together, are somewhat persuasive, to me. Opening my mind to the possibility that paranormal or occult things exist has allowed me to make sense of a few life experiences from when I was younger. When I was a kid, we lived in a big, old house that had been converted into an upstairs-slash-downstairs duplex, but it was all family living there. One morning I was awake but still in bed, and I saw this really fancy-looking couple walk through my wall, across my room, and through the other wall. I told my mom about it, and she had me describe the people. It turns out three other members of the family had seen the lady I saw, but I was the only one who ever saw the husband. Later on, I found out that my mom and two aunts used a Ouija board, and the ghost said her name was Emily. They confirmed through town records that Emily had lived there and was buried in the town cemetery a couple miles away. I was around 11 years old when my folks saved up enough money to build our very own two-story home from the ground up and move out of the trailer house we'd lived in pretty much all my life. The house was erected on a 12-acre vacant plot of land out in the country in South Texas, where most of my mom's family had grown up. I was an only child, and the only two options for my bedroom were the two vacant rooms upstairs. My parents would be in the master downstairs. Over the course of a couple years, I felt uneasy upstairs in my room, but I chalked it up to being in a new space and feeling so isolated from my mom and dad because I was by myself upstairs most of the time. Smaller incidents led up to one major event, which happened one night when I was sound asleep in my room. 
It's important to note that what I experienced I had never experienced before, nor have I ever since this night. But what happened was that I sort of woke up, but not entirely. I fell asleep facing up, on my back, but how I'd woken up was face down, and it was right up on my very own face. I could feel my very own breathing as I was sleeping. The only way to describe it is what I'd call an outer body experience. The breath coming off my sleeping self was hot. I could feel it. And my outer body self was slowly, and I mean painfully slow, floating upward and backward towards the far upper corner of the room. I couldn't move. Couldn't blink. Centimeter by centimeter, I was gradually floating away from my face, and I started to make out my features in the dark. I could see my mouth, then my nose, then my closed eyes. I started to feel slightly panicked as I was piecing together how this felt, unlike any dream or nightmare I've ever had. I was awake, in my outer body. And I was seeing myself sleeping right in front of me. But as I slowly floated further up, I started to notice the side of my pillow. There was a hand on it. Not mine. And it didn't look quite right. Like it was sick, burned, or decayed. As I kept moving further up and back, more came into my field of sight. I saw long, dark hair. A shoulder. This figure in the dark was a girl. She was wearing a nightgown, it seemed. Her hair was hanging down in front of her face, so I couldn't make out what she looked like quite yet. But her demeanor and what she was doing sent chills down my spine and made my heart start to race. She was inches from my sleeping self's face. Staring at me, I sleep. And she was fidgeting. Moving around a bit. Looking at various parts of my face. It appeared she wanted me to wake up but wouldn't touch me. The look of her skin on her hands resting on the pillow and blanket beside me kept disturbing me. They looked burned or badly decayed. I didn't want to see her face, but I didn't know why I was seeing all this. Soon, my outer body was all the way up in the top corner of the ceiling. I'd stopped. I guessed I was now touching the ceiling, looking down and ahead at the unnerving scene before me. A girl on her knees at the side of my bed is leaning over with her hands on my pillow, her face staring at my sleeping face. As I watched in terror, unable to move, she suddenly stopped fidgeting. She grew rigid, as if something had seen her. Her head slowly turned to look up at my outer self. As she did this, my blood ran cold. Her face was indescribable. She looked dead. Her eyes, I'll never forget them. And when she noticed me, outside of my body, on the ceiling, a look of sheer desperation came over her face, and she bolted from the bed and started to reach for me up at the ceiling. As soon as she drew near, my outer self suddenly jolted back into my sleeping self, and I awoke to a sharp breath of air, and my entire body was covered in goose flesh. To make things worse, my little Jack Russell Terrier was growling at the area on the floor where the girl had been kneeling. I was shaken and couldn't sleep in that room. I dragged my mattress down the flight of stairs that night all by myself. Slept in the living. My parents didn't believe me, as the story mostly goes. But I never slept in that room as a child again. After I left college years ago, I moved in with my ex fiance in St. Louis City for a few years before we broke up and I moved back out to the country. At one point, we bought a house in South City that was over 110 years old. I found it creepy as shit and didn't like it, but my ex loved it for some reason and bought it immediately without my approval. I got to say, though, that I'm glad my name wasn't on the mortgage or title. When we were looking at the house, there was no furniture in it except in the basement. Although the basement was mostly finished, there was a room in the middle, actually, it was more of a cage than a room. The floor inside was unfinished dirt. It had a small child's bed and a dresser in it. They said the furniture came with the house. Just being in that basement gave me dark vibes. I never should have moved in. At night, usually around 3 a.m., you could hear a child crying and sobbing in the basement. Sometimes it was loud enough that I could hear it over the TV upstairs. I would wake up a lot at night only to see a green, glowing ghost dog with red eyes staring at me sitting at the side of the bed. As long as I didn't break eye contact, it would sit there staring at me, but if I closed my eyes and reopened them, it would disappear. Lots of other little weird things happened, like cabinets opening and lights turning off, etc., but in the less than a year I lived there, I probably saw the ghost dog in the middle of the night 50 plus times and heard the kid crying or screaming 200 plus nights. Then, a couple years later, I got a job as a store manager for a gas station chain. I got a store that was right next to an old and big cemetery, surrounded by it on two sides of the property. A few days before I took over the store, the old man who normally worked the overnights tripped walking home and broke his shoulder. He had been out for a month or so. The assistant manager had worked overnight for a day or two before I took over the store. She had an experience that night and called the district manager, telling her she should quit. 
All I was told at the time was that the district manager had talked her into not quitting but that she was going to go part-time and only work day shifts. So I ended up talking to the assistant manager, who had just stepped down the next day. She told me that she was forced to step down because she refused to work the third shift ever again, and it was required to have 24-7 availability to be a manager. When I asked her why, she said I wouldn't believe her unless she showed me. So we went into the manager's office, and she got on the camera system and showed me video from a few nights earlier. Although the store was open 24-7, they locked it up from 1.30 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. and had a window you could purchase stuff from during those hours. During this time, she was back in the cooler, stocking the cooler. The store was completely locked up, and she was the only person in the store. What I saw next was amazing. They had an end cap near the front door, and as you came in with lots of little gifts and collectibles, on the top shelf were porcelain Indian dolls. I watched as one rose up a few feet in the air and then suddenly flew across the room, smashing against the back wall of the store, almost 20 to 30 feet away. Along with her coming out of the cooler and trying to figure out what happened, I had to work the overnight shift that night too because we didn't have anyone else. Although I never had anything like that happen the few times I had to work overnight there, I would see stuff moving around inside the store a lot while I was working in the cooler during those locked up hours, but I never saw anything besides what I thought were shadows and reflections. I have had a lot more experiences over the years, these are just the ones I can 100% claim I know were real. I honestly believe the crawlers to be somewhat demonic in nature. I actually, for many years, thought it was ghouls I was seeing. The first time I saw that forest ghoul trail cam picture, I freaked out because of how similar it was. They seemed to be incredibly violent and killed just to kill. I also believe, from their looks, that they are a subterranean species. They're pale, almost transparent skin and black eyes just scream to me that they are something that doesn't spend any time in the sun. After all this, let's just say it's made it impossible for me to be a blind sheep anymore. Moved back to the secluded farm where I grew up in eastern North Carolina. My whole family lives there and has for several generations. For the most part, it is just us, spread out across the various houses that dot the field. On the night my cousin gave birth to her second child, a daughter, I stayed with her son. Being that I was pretty close to him this was decided as part of the plan pretty early on, and as the months grew closer to the end of her pregnancy, I kept closer to home than usual. One night, just a few weeks from her due date, her labor came on suddenly and was progressing fast. My cousin left her son with my uncle and grandfather and she and her mother proceeded to drive the 35 miles to the hospital, where her husband was waiting to meet them. I was working late but left for home as soon as I got the news. I drove straight to my aunt and uncle's house, parked my car laying the dirt road and walked a short distance in the dark. I noticed immediately how quiet and withdrawn my little cousin was when I went inside, and even though he was only two and a half, this was not like him at all. He was usually pretty chatty about, you know, typical kid stuff, but not that night. I chalked it up to the excitement and upset of the sudden labor, a part of which he witnessed, and after we chatted a bit he seemed to lighten up. After a short few minutes, it was closer my uncle and grandfather were ready for bed and now I decided to get him on home. Anyway, being that he was so little and that enough excitement had already happened for one day, I decided I would drive the short distance to their home rather than walk the typical journey. I did not want to risk encountering a wild animal or falling with him in the dark. I don't know if he was already expecting the typical walk, but as soon as I descended the front porch stairs, his entire body tensed, and he wrapped himself around me so tight it hurt. He buried his little head on my shoulders and was practically grinding his nose into my neck. I had the sudden urge to flee the area. What is it, little man? I asked him, quickening my pace. Suddenly, his arms shot out, and he pulled back, looking at me, stopping me in my tracks. And said, in the most terrifying kid voice, but clear as day, I shit you not. Please, Aunt Kay, he calls me aunt, don't go into the yard, they are everywhere. They are watching us. My blood ran cold, and I mumbled something about angels as he suddenly started to wail, the most terrifying sound I had heard in a long time. I noped my way to the car with him and tore into my cousin's house like a crazy woman. I ended up distracting him with treats and play, but he never really let go of me for almost the entire night. After he finally went to sleep, I laid on their living room couch, looking out their window. Sure, I could feel some craziness going on out there. His little sister was born several hours later, healthy and beautiful. The strange feeling from the night before was gone. He made pancakes and waited to let his parents tell him the good news. My cousin's husband arrived home shortly after nine to switch places, showing C and I pictures of the new baby. I went to my house and showered and then drove to the hospital, where I met the new member of our family, the first female born after our generation. 
I didn't mention the moment from the night before to my cousin until months later, nor did I present it as anything more than a passing comment her son had made. I did not express to her the terror I felt or that he clearly felt that night, and I have never gone into full detail about it with many people. This is the South, after all. I mentioned that I was a Christian and still am, but my cousin is extremely religious, as are my aunt and uncle. Her son did not watch TV or go to daycare and had only just started speaking in full sentences. He was not and has never been, by nature, a creepy kid. To this day, I fully believe he saw something. In those fields. So back in 2008, I was 13 and on summer vacation. At that time, we finally had decent internet, found anime online, and got hooked. I knew about anime beforehand but never about websites to watch them since we had asked internet beforehand. Anyway, my older brother worked in a lodge up in the mountains and would leave at 2 p.m. and be home by 3 a.m. since he had a 2 to 3 hour commute and worked as a busboy in the restaurant at the lodge. He would always bring things like snacks, drinks, and food made in the restaurant, and since it was summer vacation, I'd wait for him to see what he'd bring. So I would watch the Summer Olympics and then go watch some anime in the night with the laptop he owned since he let me use it. My father is a field worker and generally leaves to work around 5 to 6 a.m., depending on where he works since it's all seasonal. My mother is generally awake around 4 to 5 a.m. to make his lunch, so it wasn't unusual to hear them awake in the middle of the night. So it was around 3 a.m. and I was lying on my bed with the laptop on my chest, so I couldn't see the door clearly since the laptop screen covers that spot, and the door was directly in front of me since my bed was on that side of the room and my brother's bed was on the other side of the room. I heard my mother turn on the hallway lights and use the restroom, and I thought nothing much of it was right, so a few minutes go by and I hear my door opening slowly, and I assumed it was my mother, so I asked her what's up, but she gave no reply, so I lowered the screen and looked at the door, and that's when I saw it. A very tall woman was staring at me, her head was sideways as her neck reached the ceiling and her hair had reached the door knob. I could see her holding the door, and I just lay there frozen, unable to do anything. Not sure how much time passed, but she slowly left and closed the door and then noticed the hallway light still on since this figure effectively blocked it. I lay there for a few minutes before finally grabbing my flashlight and my switchblade, completely scared until my brother came home. Shit scared the duck out of me, so my parents are believers in the paranormal, and they believed it was the evil spirit of the women who had almost kidnapped me when I was smaller. My dad said the witch doctor he visits told him it was and that my three experiences were most likely hers. It still scares me to this day to think about it. I was adopted when I was 9 years old. My adoption was nothing like what society and the media make it out to be. It wasn't tons of hugs and kisses and a happily ever after, it was a nightmare. It got so bad that I ran away when I was 17 to my biological father's house, my grandma lived there too. That was back in 2007, and I haven't looked back since. When I first arrived at my father's, I was a mess, emotionally drained, and completely on edge. I was afraid I was going to be picked up by the cops at any moment. I was terrified. Moments turned to hours, hours turned to days, and days turned into months with no cops knocking at the door. Only after I turned 18 did I truly feel free and know I didn't have to worry any longer. I was now an adult and had the right to be wherever I wanted to be. Once I was comfortably settled in, I started college full-time. When I would get out of class for the day, I would go home and watch TV while doing homework. I was finally at peace and felt like my life was finally going in the right direction. I never felt more optimistic or excited to be alive. I was happy to leave my old life behind, until that one evening when everything came rushing back into me a million miles per second. I was on the couch with my grandma, watching Judge Judy, when we heard a knock on the front door. When I opened the door, there was a young girl standing there in tears. I immediately asked her if she was alright and if she was hurt, and I invited her inside. She refused to come in. It was a hot summer day, and she was wearing a silk bomber jacket and high-waisted jeans. I thought she must be hot, so I offered her water. She refused that too. I asked her what I could do for her since she was denying all my offers. She simply said, be my friend. I thought that was very strange, I was about 6 years older than her, but I didn't show it. That's when I asked her where she lived and if we were neighbors. She told me what street she lived on, and I hadn't heard of it, so I looked it up on Google Maps, and she had walked over 3 miles to my exact doorstep, which was very weird. So I went back outside and asked her why she walked so far, what made her come down this particular road, and again why she was crying. She told me she needed a friend and that she was adopted, and her adopted mom was terrible to her. She continued to go into detail about being depressed, verbal abuse, and constant fighting. At that moment, I saw myself in her eyes. It was the wildest feeling, chills rushed up and down my entire body. 
What a coincidence, right? I then hugged her and told her it would be okay and that what she was going through was only temporary. I told her she couldn't stay and that I would need to take her home. She was reluctant but agreed. On the way to her house, she made me promise her that I wouldn't walk her to the door because she had sneaked out, and if her mom knew what she had done, she would be in trouble. She said she would go in through her window. I dropped her off at the top of a hill that led down to a group of homes, of which she claimed one was hers. I turned around and started driving back to my house. I had this falling feeling in my stomach, and something made me turn back around to make sure she got an okay, or make sure some crazy psycho didn't run out and start beating on her. When I turned the road at the top of the hill, I couldn't believe my eyes. I saw the young girl crawling into a cactus plant. I continued to drive up to the plant and call out to her, but received no response. I got right up to the plant, nothing was in there. No purple satin jacket, no jeans, no shoes, no girl. Shocked. For a second, I lost all sense of reality. I literally couldn't believe my eyes, and I was quite frightened by this experience. Was I losing my mind? Should I check myself in? I could not put two and two together. The more I think about this incident, the more I wonder. Why did she refuse to come inside? Why did she not drink the water I gave her on a hot day after walking three miles? How and why did she pick my house out of all the others she passed to make a friend with? What are the chances of her having a very similar life story to mine? And mostly, how did she crawl, in front of my own eyes, into a plant and disappear? Why did I feel the urge to turn back? All of it is very strange and unexplained.